When I turned, the mannequin from the clothing department was a few feet closer to me. Before I could collect my thoughts, both of the shining red mannequins burst into a spring towards me. Bright lines of light reflected off his smooth body. He didn't move at all. It's a mannequin, I thought. Yeah. Move your ass and yeah. find Deborah. Yes. For fuck's sake, thank God he's finally realised. This man is starting to really get on my lumpy yeah, tits. On your tit on your lumpy tits. <laughs> <laughs> the carolers. This is sex. This is sexting for money. <laughs> this is Dad in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> Joy to the world. I've come. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. Oh, the way. It feels like I'm in a cult. <laughs> it's to rise in the pod box. Uh, welcome. Merry Christmas. Oh, God, we did not plan that, did we? Welcome to the Christmas, the Christmas special. special. It's a two parter, baby. Ghost Sun's Christmas special. Merry shit. What you all Christmas. needed. Merry <laughs> shitty Christmas. So we need to get some fucking no. cards with that. Fuck I'm not doing cards this year. I'm not doing. I've what as if you've ever done them. Just no. Yeah, I've literally. Where was mine last them. year? <laughs> never done. You're like this year. Just so you know, everybody, I'm not doing cards. I'm too kind. I'm not doing cards. It's for the environment. Okay, not doing, <laughs> not doing cards. Um, I've the, today is going to be very manic energy because me and Susie are both really mad. Fuming, as I'm usual. Fuming. I'm raging. Susie's raging. <laughs> And what happens is that we try and not... Because what will happen is we'll go out and have a wine after this. We're going to have a little Christmas wine. <laughs> you going to say a wine? And we'll say... We'll go and have, <laughs> right. Me and Susie are going to go and have a little wank after just to try and get all of our frustration. Just get it back. out. Have a little wank. Just a little one. <laughs> Don't we're worry, We're going to have a little wine after and then we're going to shout at each other yeah. about the things we're annoyed at. Oh. So in order to get through this to do that, we <laughs> need to be... Manic. Yeah. It's, it's bit, manic energy. It is manic, manic energy. Um, I only saw you yesterday, but oh, I mean, fine. Oh, How are you? Fuck are you? <laughs> um, I'm. Do you know what? Oh my God, I've got news actually. Okay. <laughs> but you can go first. No, you please go. No, you no, please. No, please. You. No, please. No, I don't have any. Okay. Um, I've got uh, I've got very lumpy breast tissue. What? I'm a lumpy breaster. Yes. What do you? What do you I've mean? got lumpy breast tissue. I know. I'm devastated. What did they tell you that? Well, I went to the doctors last night, um, and as as I was running out, I went 22 eight. Can you believe that for a doctor's appointment? It's absolutely outrageous. So I went. Oh, excellent doctors, by the way. Absolutely thrills. Went in, did my thing, came out, and as I was halfway across the reception, I went, "Oh shit, me tits!" And I ran back in, <laughs> and I was like, "I'm so sorry." I just went up and I said, "Oh shit, me tits." <laughs> yeah, as is name cool. of the episode. Oh shit, me tits. So I went. Oh shit, me tits. Ran back into the doctor. And I was like, "Is there any way you could?" I forgot to ask you to just check my boobs because I, I I don't know what I'm looking for and yeah. I've got no idea and I've become a bit of a hypochondriac. Um, so I lay down on the bed and she was like, "It's very hard." I was like, "How do you?" She was like, "I'll teach you how to do it." And she was like, mm, "Because you're quite young." That's oh, good. That's, yeah, I no, was that was pride. Nice. She said, "Because you're quite young, your breast tissue is very dense." A dense breast tissue and it's quite lumpy. So I've been, I could have a feel of them and be like, oh my God, I'm riddled. Yeah. With with breast cancer. What, yeah, but lumpy. actually, it's just my lumpy breast tissue. So now I've got to go in every time, you know, just every few months to have a check. My, my titties. Oh, and because you're worried if you did that yourself, you wouldn't be able Well, to I just wouldn't know. Honestly, if you had to go, yeah. If you had to go, you would be like, you are, you've, there's too many. Yeah, you're red dull. And it's, it's very, it is very lumpy. Oh, good. <coughs> so I'm, abs I'm a bit devastated about that, obviously. Um, I'm going to the doctors on Monday. Got your doctors Fort appointment. Yeah, slash maybe this Friday. Me and Susie did think we were dying. <clears throat> yeah, we did. We ha we've had a, I think we've had a really weird couple of weeks where we're both convinced that we're dying. And yeah. we've been on the edge. And well, it's manifested well, in being quite snappy and, and ragey. Has. Yeah, ragey. Uh, Not really towards each other, but to everybody else. Yeah, well. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, no, what do you mean? at the beginning of the pod, when we, you were like, what are you doing? Oh, yes. <laughs> why why ah. haven't you drawn a tarot? Yeah, if anybody's her? wondering whether me and Susie are out, we're not. Yeah, <laughs> we're, very, just a bit snappy. we're very snappy. A bit I will say, Susie's forgotten my gift, so I'm going to get snappy again You had today. your actual perfume. It was like a... Yeah, all right, whatever. And to tell me whatever. 20 minutes before I fucking... Yeah. You're like, oh, did you bring the samples? <laughs> I was like, I actually can't ah, deal with that right well, now. Well, it does take you an hour to I get. Like, I cannot <laughs> yeah. deal with that question. I was like, no, move on. Some people may think that we've been snapping at each other, but we're not. We're just very, we're just very good friends, and we can shout if we yeah. want to. I, I no just, problem I just whatsoever. couldn't um, get into that. I was like, um, I haven't got them. Move on. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't, make me, don't make me laugh. I've got a cough. Do not make me laugh. Oh, God. This is like reminiscent anyway, of episode one. Weirdly, and two though, and three. we have. Yeah, it is. Um, you're <coughs> coughing. Weirdly, though, we have both had the same symptoms. Yeah. So we both thought we were literally dying. Yeah, it's it's really weird that. Talk to me about Morpheus, by the way. Oh, oh, moving on from healthcare to skincare. Beautiful yeah. transition. I want to get Morpheus on my face. What is it? Is it I injectables? Think it's a very aggressive chemical peel. Oh right. I, th- peel. I, don't, I don't know that for sure. I but listen, it was laser. But listen, I've had this follow on Instagram off um where are we? I've had a, I've had a follow off Instagram off the skincare place. Yeah. And I would very much, you know, if you're listening, uh, I would really like it if you could uh, follow us back. We do. Uh, sorry, sponsor us because we have space. Oh, we always have space. We've always got space. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Where, where's oh, I can't fucking find. But would you have? I would have a Morpheus. I would have. I want to look like a fucking seal. Yeah. I want to look so. I just, I just, I sort of want to get like tear out my under eyes. Yeah. And then just kind of have this shiny face. I need this to be off. I want to look like the Paris filter everywhere I go. I need this to go off of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, I need my yeah. chin to stop. I need this. I need this sag to stop. Mm. It's very upsetting for me. I'm trying to find. I can't find them. You can Either they've you stopped. Can they, they could have blocked me, to be honest. But we'll find out who they are, and hopefully we'll get. Um, it's not. It's not unethical, is it, to get sponsored by? Absolutely Skincare. not. Get filler. Get <laughs> <laughs> Fill your face. Fill your face for okay. Christmas with Hannah and Cece. Um, um, well, how were you? You were going to tell some news and then I put it in. Oh, wait, she's, she's, lost, she's lost the plot. Jogging through the snow, one has open sleigh. It's just so uncomfortable for me. We go. I'm also really making eye contact. Yeah, with you. I'm trying so hard. I'm usually really good at making eye contact, yeah. but this feels like. The musical merry go round. It feels like if I make eye contact with you, I'm going to turn into like a fucking statue or something. Well. I don't like that. It's, what? Uh, what? It's still going. Um, Hannah. I'm <gasps> ah! It. You're a little I shit can't bag. I can't help it, especially when we're on Shitty it. We're back in the m- pod box. Shit bag. As well, we should address that. We're back in the pod box. As, well, I, I, think, I think if you were watching, it would be hard to um, think that was Spotify. I have literally exploded. Yeah. Spotify Christmas wouldn't let us do that. <laughs> over the fucking pod box. Spotify would not let um, us do Look, it. that's some mistletoe hanging down. <laughs> oh, God. So if Susie's anyone wants... fine. It's no. happening. Susie's coming on too. <laughs> I only knew it was Get a yourself of under the plant. Give me a go on that lumpy <laughs> breast tissue, oh, will you? Mmm. <laughs> Get under the toe. <laughs> right. Get under my toe. Okay. So, um, oh, by the way, oh, God. have a look at that. There's yeah. a fucking creepy little Santa there just climbing out of the scarf of the owl. Weird. What is going on? What is that? Well, look at him. He's got Why like, does he's he look got like blood. a ball bag? He's got a ball bag and he's got um, blood encrusted on his this lips. This Santa looks like a testicle. <laughs> looks like Alan Sugar. <laughs> it does. So hang on, is that actually attached to that? Uh, yeah, no. I've uh, just pl- I've plonked him in. You've plonked him in. Where the fuck did you get that from? Well, it's in the bag of treasures. Bag of treasures. <laughs> you become... And more every time I see you become more and more like an eccentric old man in a little town. <laughs> in a little <laughs> Who town. Who walks around with four Zane's. Yeah, bags. yeah. I've got my like some old treasure. like apple bag. I've got like just fucking tinsel <laughs> hanging out my hair. Like, what is this? That's weird. Isn't it? Okay. Anyway. Would you like to pick a tarot, Susie? Yes, I would, please. Do you want to pick a t- Christmas tarot? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Yum, yum. Okay. Oh, it's the page of fucking carrot. <laughs> <laughs> what the? F- oh, I look him up. Fucking book, don't I? Okay, let's Hang put on. him. I'll put the him there. The page of, tar- of carrot is not a phrase. Ah! Oh, oh, <laughs> oh I'm so sorry, everybody at home. I'm sure you expected the Christmas. Oh, there he is. Episode. So he looks rather fancy. He's got a little feather in his cap. What dates this coming out, by the way? The 26th, so you've had a oh, Merry Christmas. so it's your Boxing Day. Yeah. Which, Bo- I love day Boxing Day. Just special. sit around drinking, playing with your toys. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is very sexual today. I don't know what, what the fuck, where the fuck it is. Page of one. I couldn't find them before. I think we've done Oh, have before. we had this before? Right, we're the going to page every is quite hard to find. I can look up on Biddy Tarot, though. <sighs> I feel like... 
Shall I look up tarot.com? Um. Wow, that just started playing, you know. Where the That's frig weird, is this? Shut the fuck up. Why are you still playing? Oh, this is just, this is chaos. Okay, so I'm uh, going to look up page of wands. Page of wands. I don't know if I'm even looking in the right place. Here we go. Biddy Tarot. Um, oh, my God. It's so good. It says, inspiration, ideas, discovery, oh. um, limitless potential, free spirit. Finally got him. This happens every time. Oh. Uh. Go on, what does it say? This The page embodies passionate, raw potential. Great ideas exist but haven't come to fruition because of inexperience or fear. No, that's so... That, we're, why? 2024, it's going to be a huge... Yeah, but why? Like our tour? Great ideas, great ideas exist but haven't come to fruition because of inexperience or fear. Maybe the, the inexperience, to be fair. Yeah. We have little... To no experience. Yeah, but I think our tour, when we go out of London, that's going to be... Tour, the merch that's coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's we very are very fitting. inexperienced. Very that. fitting. Very fitting. Um, right. Lovely. Um, are there any other things I want to tell you about? No. So... Do you want to do your part <laughs> did two? Did you have a nice Christmas? <laughs> did you have a nice... Oh, yeah. Did you have a nice Christmas? I don't know. Okay, I... tell me. Yeah. Right. Mm. I'm going to ask you if you had a nice Christmas coming out on Boxing Day. So tell me yeah. what you think your Christmas Day is going to be like as though you've already had it. So I think it's going to be pretty low key because... Well, you've already had it. So you say, I, I had a low key time. Key, Hannah. Oh. Um, it is low key. It mm. was low key. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and... Was Hugo there? No, because he's flying. So we have the dog, but oh. Hugo's flying around the world for his fancy job, isn't it? Jesus. 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 Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Yeah, so he's fucked off around the world with yeah. his Chinese billionaire Lovely. boss. Lovely. Um, and uh, uh, it's just me, mum and dad and the dog. So it will be, it will be wake up late. Getting battered. I'm going to, well, yeah, I probably will have a champagne about midday. Yeah. I'll have a blini. Yeah. No one in the house likes them, but I'm probably going to make them. Yeah. Because, you know, get into the festival. I like a blini. I, I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I will have had. I have had. <laughs> I've had, had blini. It's like a grammar test and I'm losing yeah, my fucking No, mind. fucking I just say what you want. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So you want. Say what you want. Um, yeah. <coughs> so it would have been, I think I'll be a bit bored, but also a bit like snug. Yeah. Just get, take up like drugs. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mushrooms. Mom, that'd be nice. Listening, we've had a massive doobie in the garden. <laughs> yeah, have some mushrooms. Get some mushrooms. That'd Shall be I nice. get um, me, mum and dad to microdose all day? Yeah. Oh my God. No, mm. don't microdose. Maxo dose. <laughs> Maxo have dr Have the whole mushroom. Max out on the shrooms. So what What will, um, what will? What have you been up to yesterday? Uh, well, yesterday I uh, got that pissed like at two, 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 two loads of mushrooms, had a, had a joint, um, gave introduced Freddie to, to, to vodka and cokes. Nice. Um, yeah. I think oh, it, I oh. think we'll just have a nice chill. Yeah, just relaxed. I don't like. I like Boxing Day. I don't like Christmas Day. Really? Yeah. Christmas Day, there's too much expectation. Everyone's like, it has to be really fun. And then you're like, and then yeah. on Boxing Day, everyone's like, okay, fine. It's not gonna. Be I fun. like. I mean, you I, can have a turkey and stuffing sandwich, yeah. which is delicious. Yeah. And then you can sit down and play with your toys. But at least you have uh, enough people to play a ball game. See, as you know, I'm quite like organised fun. Oh, like, come to us. Come to us. Bring your mum and dad. Yeah. Come to us. Well, I will enforce. Game. I mean, mum, when she listens to this, she'll be like, oh, she fucking did as well. I'm probably going to make them play games. Yeah. Pass the bomb. You should play games. Games are fun. Yeah. <laughs> games are fun. Games are fun. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Um, what else? Uh, TikTok became a bin, didn't it? <laughs> but we've discussed TikTok that. TikTok became a bin. As oh, in, like, as soon as you do well on TikTok, sick. don't fucking look at the comments. Those, uh, I, no, I don't look at them. I, don't, I haven't. Don't. I just saw that one woman saying, why is it really bad? No, 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 no. It's um, not. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting mixed messages. TikTok is a fucking a bit. bit. If you were the one that commented to say, shame the podcast's a drag, I'm going to come and find you. <laughs> we'll and I'm going to do nothing will, illegal we... because this is recording. <laughs> We will find you and shake your hand. Okay. Um, okay, would you... No, shall I do for, um, part two? Do your part two, please. Because, I'm um, very excited. Can you just remind everyone where we were at? Yeah, I will. Also, Brian, our lovely our lovely, our lovely editor-in-chief today. Lovely. Brian, can you actually speak on the pod? Would we hear you if you did? <laughs> now we're asking I'm putting him on yeah, the spot. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I, I was just wondering... Oh, I can hear myself back. Can you? 
No. Okay. Um, I can. Brian, do you have a ghost story? I sort of have a ghost story. <gasps> See, I just think you should kick us off with a little... Do you want to tell it, Brian? Um, so back in 1999, on New Year's Eve, we went to stay in Pembroke. So only three then. <laughs> um, up for the millennium. Oh, yeah. And uh, there was a big group of us down there, and we stayed in the old chapel, and there was a big cemetery outside. And then so I seen uh, what was an old lady... Uh, sitting in the living room uh, when we were watching telly. Oh. In the evening, uh, there was um, the bath ran itself and uh, and multiple things on and off throughout the uh, throughout the weekend. So are you technically a believer, Brian? I believe so. You? Really? Millennium. Um, where, so where did you see her? <laughs> in, in the, she was sitting in the living room Oh, in your living room? No, in the, in the chapel. In the chapel. Oh, the chapel's living room? Yeah. Oh, That's fucking hell. That's fucking spooky, isn't it? Why do you think she was a ghost? Why do I think she was a ghost? Not just some mad twat running around the village. Uh, because she was uh, translucent. Was oh. she? That is a classic ghost. Yeah, that would be full-on ghost. Mm. Easy. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. No um, okay. Give it hit us with part two. So remind us what happened. So remember Target. We're in Target. We're, so, we're, at, we're at a building that's covered in little Target logos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you remember, it's um, his wife Deb is absolutely yeah. obsessed with the bargain. Yeah, and she's gone to Owingsville, Kentucky, and yeah. she's like, "Just take me to this new Target because I'm going to find some." And then she's texted him, "Help me." And mm. he was like, oh, does this mean, yeah. like, help me with my shopping? Yeah, help me, you lazy bastard. Yeah, and he's been in the parking lot, fell asleep for 45 mm. minutes. Oh, yeah, that little text, nappy talk. And then suddenly it's full of yellow cars yeah. in the parking lot. And he's like, what What the fuck is going yes. on? So then he um, he goes up to the, the open E doors. Automatic doors are some... Open E doors? them. Brilliant. And, uh, and he's like, oh, no, I wish I hadn't. Wow. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. So... When I turned to head towards the door, there was no one moving around inside that I could see from there. My stomach dropped. Oh, there was no one in there, it's empty. Something was wrong. When I passed through the entryway doors, the store looked like it should, with a few exceptions. All of the registers were self-checkout with no place for an attendant. Where you would expect to find a customer service department, there was an empty red wall. There was a car corral, but it stood empty. All of the products I could see on the shelf had no writing. Just the Target logo and a picture of what what red <laughs> <laughs> and a picture of what was inside. Like Tesco value. Like yeah. Tesco blue stripe. Mm. Mm. Red stripe. Yeah. Red stripe. Strangest of all was the lack of people. Strangest. Sorry, yeah. Strangest. Yeah. Mm. That's that. lovely. Strangest of all was the lack of people. The only noise in the building was a keyboard version of the girl from Ipanema. That's the one that always plays in my head. Yeah. Uh, I was the yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it had a tinny quality to it, as though it were playing from a World War II era radio. Crackles of static pierced through occasionally, causing me to wince. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I said loudly. It wasn't quite a shout, but there was more volume to it than my normal speaking voice. It took most of my willpower not to scream at the top of my lungs, but I didn't want to make myself seem unstable if it turned out there were other people in the Yeah, store. I mean, I feel like you're getting Relax. a bit ahead of yourself, mate. It's just an empty Justin, store. Justin, or whatever his He's name like, it's is. a red wall! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there has to be someone else here, I thought to myself. Why the hell would the parking lot be full if no one was inside? No one Where's Deb? Yeah. That's what we need to find out. No one answered my call. Excuse me. Oh, he sounds like a dick. Said a bit louder. <gasps> no, he doesn't do that. Oh, you, you cannot click your fingers. Imagine. My footfalls almost seemed to echo as I walked into the store. Deborah? Oh, it's Deborah. It's in trouble. Can you hear me? Silence. Is anyone in this damn building? <laughs> I screamed. So annoying. So annoying. My temples were throbbing and it felt like the calm music pouring from the speakers grew louder to drown out my calls. I was running down the aisles, looking side to side frantically, passing row after row of generic shelves filled with red packaging. I screamed my wife's name over and over. My phone vibrated in my pocket and I pulled it out. Another text from Deborah. Oh. Please get me out of here. Oh. A chill went up my spine. Can you hear me screaming for you? 
The ellipsis bubble popped up showing she was typing a response. Oh, it's going to disappear, isn't it? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't mean no oh. to you. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um. Oh, no. He said, can you hear me shouting for you? I'm confused. Okay, so she said, please get me out of here. He oh. says. He says, can you hear me screaming? Okay. She was typing a response. No. I can only hear the red men. I'm hiding f from them in the bathroom. Please come help me. The red men. Oh, uh -oh. fuck me. It's like little borrowers in Target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> palumpas. I didn't have time to register what she meant by the red men. Breaking into a run, I headed towards the back of the store. As I passed by the clothing section, I panicked and jumped back, slamming into a rack filled with clothing. A red, faceless man was standing on a platform behind the rows of clothing. What, like a mannequin? Like a mannequin, right. yeah. So no problem so far then. So yeah, exactly. So completely overreacting yeah. to the situation. Yeah, you've just seen a mannequin. Yeah. Terrified, I pushed myself backwards and hid behind a shelf. There was no sound of movement, only the tinny music playing from overhead. I couldn't decide if the red man hadn't seen me. After a few moments, I slowly peeked my head around the shelf towards the clothing section. The man stood stoically behind the rows of clothing. Bright lines of light reflected off his smooth body. He didn't move at all. It's a mannequin, I thought. Yeah. Move your ass and yeah. find Deborah. Yes. For fuck's sake, thank God he's finally realised. <laughs> this man is starting to really get on my lumpy yeah, tits. On your tits. On your lumpy tits. <laughs> <laughs> I stood and walked back around the shelf. Without the lens of fear, I could see that the shiny red man was only a mannequin. There were no clothes on it yet. Maybe the store opened before they were able to finish setting up the store. Absolutely outrageous. Yeah. As I walked past it, my pulse slowed. I could see the bathroom sign hanging from the ceiling overhead and moved in that direction. As soon as I got Deborah out of the bathroom, we were going to get out of there and blow every stoplight between Owingsville and Lexington. Yeah. Then I heard footsteps. Oh, God. When I turned to face the clothing section, I could see the bright red mannequin was off the pedestal. Oh, it's... Oh, fuck. It stood on the bright white tiles of the walkway. In only a moment, the thing had moved at least 15 feet in my direction. Oh, no. There was no one around. What the hell? I said out loud. Slowly, I began to walk backwards towards the bathroom, These keeping the my eyes men, locked they? on the mannequin. Mm. Yeah, you wouldn't want to keep it out. Like, no. you want to keep it in your... Eye oh, eye. yeah. It didn't move. Back, backing up Ugh. the whole way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it didn't move, but I had the uncomfortable feeling that it was watching me with its featureless face. Sweat began to pour from my forehead. Suddenly, there were steps behind me. I spun around to see another red mannequin standing about 100 feet on the other side of me. As I looked in its direction, I could hear more footsteps behind my back. When I turned, the mannequin from the clothing department was a few feet closer to me. Before I could collect my thoughts... Both of the shining red mannequins burst into a spring towards me. <laughs> yeah. Literally, they burst into a spring. <laughs> and I was like, is that a word? It's just like little, little anal prolapses running about. <laughs> I panicked and ran into the aisle behind me. Their hard feet clacked on the floor, easily making gains on me. 20 years past my prime, I wasn't used to much physical exertion anymore. I hadn't run more than two aisles and I'd already lost my breath. I'd give it up. I'd be like, oh, whatever. Yeah, come and bash me. Yeah. Um, entering a box... <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. Entering a box of shelves, I turned to face the oncoming red mannequins. Desperate, I searched the shelves near me for a weapon. It was a home goods section, and I began to scan the shelves. At the end of the shelf to my right was a cheap-looking red-handled chef's knife. I lunged for it just in time. Nice. As I pulled off the plastic cover, the two red men came around the corner. I, 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 I extend the knife towards both of them, and they stopped. Both of them tilted their head side to side, like confused dogs. They turned towards each other as one of them began tapping a hard finger against their palm. It sounded like <coughs> Morse code. The other began making the same clicking noise. They simultaneously turned and walked towards a red support pillar a few feet behind them. I watched cautiously, scanning the area behind me occasionally. <clears throat> Their sudden disengagement made me as nervous as the pursuit itself. When they reached the red pillar, they both turned and placed their backs against it. Stretching their arms straight over their bodies, they tilted their heads back. The overhead speakers began to increase in volume. I watched as the two red men fell backwards and vanished into the pillar. <laughs> and kissed. <laughs> yeah. And fuck. I'm so confused. This, this reads like a choose your own adventure. Like, A, do you yeah, grab weird, your chef's it? knife? Or B, go for Deborah. Um, 
My mind struggled to comprehend what I'd just seen. The store was quiet again. I could feel the throbbing of my temples intensify. Once I snapped myself out of my momentary daze, I began moving cautiously towards the bathrooms again. I moved slowly, checking each aisle before I passed to the next one, always looking for the red men. <coughs> always listening... Listening. Always... <laughs> <laughs> Always listening for the slightest <coughs> sign of another person. It felt like an eternity, but finally I made it to the bathroom hallway. The lights there flickered wildly and the music dissipated. <clears throat> On the left was the men's restroom and on the right the women's. I ran quickly towards the door, gripped the handle and pulled it open. Behind the door was a red brick wall. I slammed my fist against it. Target are really taking all of their branding to the next yeah. level, aren't they? It's, you need a toilet in there. Even their murdered, murderous... Mm. Yeah, legal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, get get a, <coughs> a shudder. Um, I slam my fist against it in frustration. Darren, I was called Darren. Did we know that? Uh, no. Deborah and Darren. Darren oh, and get Darren. Fucked. The two D's. Uh, Darren. I heard a muffled voice say from behind the brick wall. Darren, is I'd that leave her there. Serves right for forcing me out on my night off. Deborah, I shouted. Are you okay? I'm right outside. Is there a way to get out? No. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not, Darren. If there was, I would have gone. Oh, She's even behind when you saved my life, you'd be a knobhead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, she whimpered. But I think I hear. Her sentence was cut short by a blood-curdling scream. I could hear thrashing and dull thuds through the red bricks. Oh. I screamed her name over and over, but she never replied. The room <coughs> behind the brick wall fell silent. Then the clicking of footsteps began to sound at the end of the hallway. I turned my head to see dozens of shiny red men blocking the hall. Their heads all tilted at different angles. Some had lengths of pipe in their smooth grips, while others held assorted kitchen knives. A chain was swinging lazily from the hands of the red man in the front of the hoard. My eyes darted back and forth between the crowd, the brick wall blocking me from my wife, and the group of demonic red mannequins. I began to cry loudly, accepting that I couldn't save Deborah. Hell, I couldn't even save myself. In resignation, I fell backwards. Jesus. As my back met what I thought was the dead end of the hallway, I was surprised to feel the push bar of a door that wasn't there moments before. What? Hang on, is this a door in the floor? Mm, yeah. <laughs> or the wall. Uh, the door gave way and I tumbled backwards, slamming hard against the ground. My vision was swimming as I watched the door marked emergency exit slam closed. I blacked out. Um, there's only a little bit left. <laughs> Just in case you... No, I'm, I'm confused, but I'm in. <laughs> You're in. Okay. I'm in, but I'm confused. Um, when I came to, I was in a field. This is so like Choose Your Own Adventure. When I came to, I was in a field. Yeah. Oh the tall grass was brushing against my face and the rustling sounds of nocturnal animals filled the night air. <laughs> I don't know what animal that was. It was like a, an eagle and, and an owl had fucked. <laughs> My head was throbbing and for a moment I couldn't recall why I was on the ground. I pushed myself up from the ground and reached forward to grab the door handle but found nothing. It was just an empty field in front of me. Moonlight reflected from my car. Moonlight <laughs> refre <laughs> Moonlight <laughs> Dancing in it. Moonlight reflected from my car windshield in the distance. The building was gone. The hundreds of yellow cars disappeared. Grass and weeds replaced <coughs> the parking lot. That was seven months ago. Wow. I called the Owingsville Police Department who came to the scene to investigate. They took my statement and looked at me in bewilderment as the story of the now absent Target stall became odder with each passing sentence. There's never been a Target in Owingsville, said one of the officers. Not the kind of place that sets up shop around here. <laughs> it's not even a McDonald's. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that. Oh my God. Oh, that, that, it's, I am correct though. Yeah. It's Bit true. sad that I know that. No, no, it's very true. It's wise. Deborah never returned. She's been listed as a missing person the entire time. Detectives oh, from fuck. Owingsville and Lexington have interviewed me more times than I can count. They've served me search warrants for the house and both of our cars. Interviewed every damn person both of us knew. No one talks to me anymore. Our friends won't answer my calls. My family won't talk to me. Why? They think they think he's killed her. Yeah, yeah he fair. was found in a field. I think he might have killed her. I think it's still his. I think this connection. is a dream. And before this, he killed her. Yeah. He killed her dad. Yeah, I think Darren's a fucking murderer. Yeah. Um, her family hired a private investigator. I see the greasy bastard following me sometimes. Hell, I even quit my job. They couldn't find me, but they made sure I knew I wasn't wanted there anymore. 
I miss my wife, but everyone thinks I killed her. <laughs> yeah, Darren. Yeah, we do, Darren. My life is falling apart, but maybe it will change. I've got to call the detective soon. When I checked the mail today, there was something strange in there. Something that gives me a little bit of hope. Oh. It was a Target mailer. Oh, no. The same one Deborah showed me all those months ago. Just advertising a different location. Target would like to welcome you to our newest location in Paris, Kentucky. Bring this ad to our new register for an additional 10% first purchase. <laughs> <laughs> that was good accent, though. Thank you. Good accent. When I go faster, it's better. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was the same group of red vested employees smiling at the camera, cheesy grins and everything. Right in the middle was a face I knew so well. <laughs> she was smiling that same smile I'd seen a thousand it's times. Just a picture of Deborah. Deborah. <laughs> Is it just a picture of Deborah? Like. Imagine ah. getting sucked into a demonic red mannequin thing just to work at Target in hell. Wow. That must be the, the what's happened. Wow. 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 Um, that was, so once um, you work at Target, you never leave. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I've heard great things about it. I assume the employment benefit. I really... think we should go when we do our I'd love to out. go to Target. I'd sew up my street, just mm. faff. Mm. Just fucking nick and just shit. Knickknack. Yeah, knickknack, like loads of candles. Shower gels. I love yeah. shit like that. Even though yeah, I just keep absolute them garbage. Them. Yeah. I only use the nice stuff that I use so it doesn't tear your skin off, but I like having them there. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Get a nice sign. Um. Okay. I checked my inbox this time last year and it said you have 63 unread emails. This is going to be such a long night. Sure, I love Christmas as much as the average person. I like earning a bit of extra cash. At first I started reading this and I thought, sex phone. <laughs> I really feel like we've done this one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, carry on, carry on. Okay, let's see what happens. But I still wasn't looking forward to it. It was my job to read each and every one of these emails and respond as if I was the real Santa Claus. Is it? I also had a small pile of handwritten letters that needed a reply as well. They were stacked up next to me, all neatly tied together with a piece of string. For some reason, I actually prefer receiving the handwritten letters other than the electronic version. It feels more personal, but it seems like most kids nowadays would rather send an email. In fact, I had only a small pile of 12 letters this year. All the others were only on email. I began to click through each one, quickly skimming what each child wanted for Christmas before replying that I would do my best to deliver that gift to them. I would always end the email by signing off as Santa Claus before clicking send. Most kids want the usual presents of bikes, games or a puppy. But there was also a number of requests that were a bit more unique. One kid wanted a bottle of hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> I can see wow. that being you. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> like, you have to be safe. Well, another wanted a hammer. That's me. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hand sanitizer and hammer. Hammer, go smash. <laughs> smash a basher. Yeah. For the most part, though, it appeared that kids mainly wanted similar gifts. The night was getting late by the time I'd answered the majority of the emails and my hand and wrist were beginning to tie it, but the thought of earning $3 for each reply was what managed to keep me working. That's pretty good, isn't it? Because I'd say that's a minute, an email. <sighs> like, <laughs> thank you, cheers. Max. And then, like, so you, you could do, what's that, like, 100 quid an hour? Yeah, it's not bad, actually. <coughs> yeah, you're right. I'd take that, no problem whatsoever. I'd take that now, in fact. I'm going to know what I'm doing after this. <laughs> Um, my eyes wanted to close, so I decided to leave the small stack of letters until tomorrow. I still had a dozen or so emails, but it was time to call it a night. Mm. Ding! The unmistakable sound of another new email rang out across my small apartment. I knew that it w I wasn't going to respond, but I still... Uh, I knew that I wasn't going to respond, but I wanted to skim read what it said before making acquaintance with my bed. Holly, good work on responding to all those emails tonight. I know it's mentally draining and I know you're working really hard. I do just want to make sure you're replying to the handwritten letters that I sent to you this morning. Those kids need a response as well. Thanks, Michael. I've never met Michael, but when it came to getting my work done, he was in constant contact with me. Michael was a decent boss, but sometimes could be a bit pushy and a tad demanding. I was going to respond to the letters as well, but both Michael and the kids would have to wait till tomorrow to hear back from the fake Santa Claus. I was just about to finish closing the lid on my laptop when I heard another ding. Another email had come through. I thought most kids would be in bed at this hour, not sending a Christmas wish list via email. Curiously, I opened my laptop. It read, on the first day of Christmas. Unsure of what this meant, I opened the email and read what was written. It didn't take long to read the words because it was only two sentences long. The caroler sent to me. 
A partridge hangs in a tree. Spooky, isn't it? Fucked up. I reread the email a couple of times, making sure that I had correctly comprehended the message. I knew what was written, but I didn't entirely know what it meant. I sat there staring at the computer screen, confused as to what this email was about. I didn't have long to be confused, though, because I had another ding filled the silence in the room. I looked at my inbox and saw that another email had appeared. The first Noel the angels did slay. <laughs> Is that a song? <laughs> The best. <laughs> oh, the latest. <laughs> Parch and Fair Tree. Woo! I can't sing a the fucking angels. note. No, I know I can sing. It's perfect. The Caroler. The email also mentioned of the Caroler, and I was unsure as to who exactly that was. Maybe just someone playing some sort of prank, but I'd seen enough horror movies to not dismiss this as such. More often than not, things like this turn out to be a practical joke, and so I was wary as to what was really going on here. I thought it was best not to respond. And then, ding. This time when I checked the email, it only contained a single sentence. Silent night, <laughs> holy night. Shepherds, quake at my sight. <laughs> quake at my sight. The Carola. The Carola signed his name at the bottom of the email again, making sure I knew where it was from, whoever they were. I was starting to feel a strange, ashamed, a, a strange sense of dread. Like my body knew that something was clearly wrong, but my brain was still trying to decipher what exactly I was concerned about. The carolers use, use oh. the carolers use of the word slay, perhaps. Mm. Ding, ding. There were two dings this time. Both of them making me jump slightly in my seat. Ooh. Yeah. My eyes darted back to the top of my inbox and I saw the two new emails that had just arrived. The first one read, Bells on Bobtail Ring, making his spirits rise. The Caroler. The second email contained another quote from another joyful Christmas carol. Joy to the world, for I have come. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a fucking pervert. Just a pervert. <laughs> the Caroler. This, this, massive... this is sexting for money. <laughs> This is Dad in the Bush. <laughs> All right. Joy to the world. I've come. <laughs> <laughs> I've ejaculated. Thank you so much. I've come, actually. Yeah. So, anyway, Merry God. Christmas. Oh, no, Have I've a good come, one, Holly. Cheers. It. Yeah, always finishing first. <laughs> now, I was worried. Whoever this was wasn't mistakenly sending the, me these emails. They were intentional. They wouldn't accidentally send me five emails, all containing strange versions of, car of carols. Ding. Rudy, the dead-nosed reindeer, had a very tiny nose. That's a bit rude. Oh, and also, don't come for the animals. No, don't come. That'll don't really do that. piss me off. The Caroler. This email was first to truly disturb me. I'm not sure entirely why, but I think it was because. Oh, sorry. But I, th mm, I think it was because it seemed as if Rudolph was purposely changed to another name. This obviously meant something, but I don't know what it was. Ding. Hark the herald angels. This is this is just an excuse for me. I'm Carol. really enjoying the Hark the Herald things. Angels sing Glory Oh Gory to the Firstborn King. Gory. Mm. Oh a bit of a joker this Caroler. The Caroler. I read this email twice before I noticed that it read Firstborn instead of Newborn as it had as it was in the song. Ding Oh come all ye faithful, dreadful and triumphant. Oh come ye, oh come ye to best. Carola. Another changed lyric to suit a name. I was absolutely sure that this was on purpose now. This had to mean something. This had to be a clue to something bigger. I looked around my empty apartment. It was dark apart from the light of my laptop, providing a faint glow of light. I stood up from my seat and took one step towards the light switch because I was going to go to bed. Ding! I didn't want to look at it. Not until the light was on. I continued to walk towards... Oh no, sorry, the light was off. And now he's going to turn it on. Okay. Holly is. Fucking hell. Is that the name? Holly? Oh, yeah, of course you know. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, a Christmas name. That's cute, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. I stood up out of my seat and took one step towards the light switch. Then I heard another ding. I didn't want to look at it until the light was on. So I continued to walk towards the light switch while constantly looking through the darkness, hoping not to see anything within it. I reached the switch, flicked it on, and quickly glanced around. It was empty. Only the wardrobe, my desk, and my bed were present. I quickly walked back over the laptop and I heard ding, ding. When I reached the laptop again, I had three unread emails. 
He sees you when he's sleeping. He knows when he is awake. The caroller. I pause to take it. Oh, it's the wind. Oh my, I absolutely shit myself. Jesus fuck. Jeez. I pause to take in what I just read before moving on to the next email. Bad tidings I bring to you and your fin. The caroller. Yeah, yeah. The final email, which was the longest so far, read, and carol out in... Oh, I don't know. I don't know this one. And carol out in the snow, there'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the gory Christmases long, long ago. The caroller. Three more emails, three more names mentioned. I waited, waited for another ding, waited for another email to pop up, but it seemed like the emails had stopped. As I sat in my now well-lit apartment, I felt a chin run down my spine. A chin? <laughs> <laughs> I felt a chin run Imagine. down my... Mm. <laughs> <You're> like, yeah. <laughs> That's a weird way of prodding me. I just felt a chin down my spine. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Um, I felt a chill run down my spine. I said that slowly because I lost my place and I can't fucking find it again. <laughs> I felt a chill run down my spine. I wasn't really sure, that sure of what I'd just experienced or what any of it meant. I just knew that it wasn't something I wanted to be involved with. It was silent and I was listening out for any small noise that I could hear just in case anyone was nearby. Other than that, it was a silent night. I'd never heard of anyone called the Caroler before and I was afraid of who it was. Why were they contacting me and why all the cryptic emails? But I suddenly had a thought. The letters. The handwritten letters to Santa that I hadn't had a chance to look at. For some reason, they'd popped into my mind, and once they occurred, I should, couldn't shake the feeling that I, they might be involved somehow. <laughs> I looked to the side and reached out to grab the top letter on the stack. Dear Santa, for Christmas, I want to be a partridge in a pear tree from Georgia Partridge. I instantly knew that this was all connected. I frantically grabbed the second letter. Dear Santa, all I want to be... Again, there was a small note written in the same neat handwriting, just like the previous letter. Dear Santa, all I want is to be found in the fields as I lay, from Noel Dover. Okay. I read the letter, then froze. I recognised that name. Noel Dover. I'd heard it before, I swear I had. Pushing the thoughts of his name aside, I grabbed the next envelope. The same handri handwritten greeting. Oh, the same handwriting greeted me in what now felt like a taunting manner. Dear Santa, for Christmas, I want to sleep in heavenly peace from Henry Shepherd. Mm -mm. It then struck me. I remembered how I knew the name Noel Dover. So I went back to my laptop. Sir, ta sir, <laughs> <laughs> sir. Search enters day 12 for missing camper. Missing camper Noel Dover has been missing for almost two weeks now. Both police and volunteers have been tirelessly searching ever since it was first reported that he was missing. Police inspected his campsite and have today revealed that there is evidence that point to foul play. It is unknown at this time whether there are any suspects that relate to this disappearance. The article continues to explain more about the missing man, but I had read enough. I remember the story from a few years ago. As far as I knew, no one had ever been convicted for his abduction. After discovering this piece of information, my mind began to race. Why was this letter sent to me? Why did it reference a true crime? Of course, my brain immediately thought of the possibility that whoever was sending me these letters were involved with his disappearance. Out of either curiosity or maybe hope, I decided to search the internet for the other names mentioned in these letters, Georgia Partridge and Henry Shepherd. I hoped to find they had not met similar fates. I entered both the names into the search engine. Georgia Partridge, body found hanging from an old pear tree, suspected suicide. Henry Shepherd, dead body was found inside of his home. A large hole was dug through his forehead. Oh, Jesus. I was seeing the pattern, which I guess was the caroler's design. This, the disturbing trend of the names from the letters all belonging to dead individuals was one that I wished I hadn't been involved with. I turned back to face my laptop and, slow, and the slowly declining stack of letters. I pulled the next letter that was resting atop the pile and opened it. Dear Santa, I want to sing a slaying song tonight from Robert Calling. Another clue that directly related to the emails. Bells on bobtail ring, making his spirit rise the email that had mentioned Bob rushed through my head. I had no doubt in my mind that if I researched his name, he would undoubtedly be dead. I decided I didn't want to know about Bob's fate, so I moved on to the next letter. Dear Santa, I want to hear the angels' voices ring from Joy Gold. 
I read through this letter once before tossing it to one side. I opened the following letter. Dear Santa, I want to meet Slasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen from Rudy Laying. After reading this letter, which also was written in the exact same handwriting, I turned back to my laptop. I looked back through my email inbox and began to cross-reference the letters with the emails. So far, they were all in the exact same order. So wait, these these are real names. These are real names of people so that Rudy are dead. Slaying and, and dead. Georgia Partridge. These aren't dead. real names because they're all they all sound a bit like Partridge and Gold and yeah. So they're real. So they're not real. Why aren't they real? Because they're all like Christmas related, or is that just yeah, maybe, part of I the don't, story? I think that's part of the story. Oh. I think it's like they've just found a way of using all the names to make it to fit make to it a festive theme. Because a festive murder. So it's a festive serial. Oh, gorge. Yeah. Okay, dokie. Um, okay. They're all the same name. As they were all in the same order, and each name was involved in the email. Oh, fuck off. And each name that was involved in the email was the same name that each letter was from. At this stage, my curiosity got the better from me and I decided to find out what had happened to these people. It didn't take long. Robert Calling disappeared from his home on Christmas Eve four years ago. Neighbours claimed not to see anyone near his house but heard bells around midnight. Joy Gold was strangled to death in her own home. A long piece of tinsel was discovered close to her body. (gasps) Susie, don't take that home. You need to bin that. You're going to die. (laughs) <laughs> Rudy Laying disappeared 11 years ago. His body has never been found. All that was ever located was his nose, which was cut off his face and left on the mantelpiece beside some Christmas cards. Christ. <laughs> I know at this point I should have phoned the police, but I needed to know more. At this moment, I heard what sounded like a slight creak behind me. Aww. And I jumped in my seat <laughs> and turned around quickly to see what it was. Nothing was out of the ordinary. I couldn't hear anything else, and other than my own rapid breathing and the loud thump, thumping, thunking of my heart, oh, very good. I turned my desk, desk, my desk chair slightly so that it was angled in a way that meant I could see the door from my apartment. Once I was satisfied, I would be able to see anyone else enter into the apartment. I grabbed the letter and opened it. Dear Santa, I want to join the Triumph of the Skies from Jacob King. It took a bit longer to find further information about Jacob, but I did find something. If anyone knows where my eldest son Jacob is, I beg of you to tell me. He hasn't been seen by anyone for three days now, and I need to know where he is. If anyone is, if he is with you, please let me know. That was all I'd managed to find about him. But it told me enough. He was missing. I looked down at the stack of papers that were left. There were still five envelopes. No doubt five more clues about five more people that were now dead or missing. Missing? <laughs> dead or missing? <laughs> Dear Santa, I want to sing, sing with a choir of angels. Sing an execution from Beth Maid. Dear Santa, do you know if I've been bad or good? Because I've been bad, for goodness sake, from Hugh Dancer. Dear Santa, I wish you a Merry Christ Massacre from <laughs> Finn Lord. So is, Legend. so is this fucking serial killer writing on behalf of these dead kids? Yes. Being like, I want to join the sky. <coughs> I don't think they're all kids. I think they're adults as well. Are they? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Because one of them went solo camping. Fine. Dear Santa, can you, um, which sounds like an absolutely horrible thing to do anyway, to be <laughs> honest. Dear Santa, can you make it the most sinful time of the year? From Carol Piping. I read through each letter. Carol more and Piping more. is not a real person. Definitely a made up word. Um, I read through each letter, getting more and more worried as I opened each one. I was worried because I was getting closer towards the final letter. I'd only received 11 emails, yet this was the 12th letter that I was going to open. I could think hopefully and assume that this envelope could actually contain a child's letter to Santa, but... Hopeful wasn't something I could be after. I could be after what I just read through. I knew this was going to be from the caroler. Mm-hmm. I turned my chair back round, sacrificing my eye line to the door, and to do so, to do so, and very hesitantly picked up the final letter. I slowly tore the envelope open and pulled out the sheet of paper. As I pulled out the letter, I could see it was the same handwriting. I read it out loud this time, and the letter was exactly what I feared it would be. Deck the halls with bowels of holly. Oh no, Holly's fucking bowels are going to start decorating her own flat. The caroler. As I finished reading it, I heard a voice from behind me. Fa la 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 la. Ha ha ha. Ha. That was a bit spooky, wasn't it? Yes. Thank you. That was great. Is that, it? Is that the whole thing? <coughs> we do have a part two. Oh, interesting. We do have a part two. But what I might do is come back to this 
after we've done our Christmas two-parter. I'm going to come back to it in a couple of episodes' time. Well, that was absolutely Thank you very much. I thought that was really spooky. Bowels of holly. Oh, That's well good. Um, Um, Well... well, We'll Let's call week, it, should we call it there? And then we'll see you in, in New Year on the in 2nd of January. With our Getting Haunted and more Christmas Eve stories. Yeah, this is going to be your part two's coming right up. It's coming, <laughs> bitch. Um, Merry Christmas. We love you so much. Bye, 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 bye. That's horrible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lucy's yeah. dropped trying to kiss me. <laughs>